So it's great to be here with all of you this morning in the second best city in the world. I know all of you New Yorkers are very competitive. The best city in the world, of course, is Sydney, Australia, where I came from. But, uh, but, I, uh, but I now uh, live in Atlanta. Uh, I'm not going to say that is the first or second best city in the world or even the third. Um, still a great city to live in. And, but New York is just such a wonderful place to, to come and I've been here a few days and I decided that I would uh, bring my wife up as well for, a, for an anniversary treat. And um, then I was thinking, okay, well, where do I take her out to dinner? And I'm an introvert and I don't really know where all the good restaurants are and, and the places to go, but I know, being smart now on human behaviour, to ask an extrovert. So my friend Sarah Enline quickly gave me a spot to go. Um, being... Um, one land by, and two by the sea, or <laughs> nearly something like that anyway, but it's a very romantic um, uh, spot, so we had a wonderful dinner um, last night. So you might be asking, well, why am I talking to you about human behaviour this morning and, uh, and your entrepreneurial style? And this is a, a really something that, that, that started... I've been looking at this for years. I'm an entrepreneur like all of you. I, I run a business. I'm an EO member, uh, been a chapter president... Uh, and, and in, in, in regional leadership myself, but, you know, how did this conversation get started? Steve and I uh, have built, you know, quite a good relationship over, over a, a few years and um, in uh, Frankfurt at GLC earlier this year, Steve, Steve sort of pulled me aside and said, you, you know, I really want to talk to you about introverts and leadership. And, you know, the conversation got in there, can introverts be great leaders and will uh, people follow an introvert and uh, who's more successful as an entrepreneur? And I said, well, it's very interesting. I've actually observed quite a lot of uh, entrepreneurs uh, through the EO journey and I, I said to, to Steve that, you know, there are some very key traits that make up a successful um, entrepreneur. And it's not really about whether you're introverted or extroverted. It's about how you manage your introversion or your extroversion. But I will come up with a key point in a minute. Um, so, you know, but what we have seen is that uh, um, for the smaller businesses, and we did, a, we, did, we did a research study and some of you might have completed the DNA behaviour assessments, that... Um, it really doesn't matter between the introversion and the extroversion at, at the smaller level of business. But as the business gets larger and we, and we see the, bus the people running a business and founder of a business over $10 million, a lot more of them are introverts. And so that's very interesting. That's not to say an extrovert can't be successful because it's really, as I said, it's about how you manage it. But there's a lot going on in the head there. And as uh, Susan will talk about in terms of quiet power, um, you know, in introverts are, are themselves very powerful people. We might be shy. That's why I started up here and sort of working my way to the front um, because I, wanted to, I did that deliberately. I know that I should be standing in the front because I'm very shy and I'm a, um, not a scaredy cat, but I'm a shy introvert. But nevertheless, as a, as a leader, I'm, I'm strong as well. So what does make up the traits of a successful entrepreneur? And so here's the phrenology of an entrepreneur, and this is based on uh, research. And so we've done extensive research on this, and we've got a research paper that we, can, that we can send all of you. But in the middle there, the ability to create your own reality uh, is uh, very big, and I've always been big on manifestation. You know, living your dreams, uh, uh, having the, the courage to step out and do something, to follow your dreams, to take charge... Uh, and go out there, make the rational decisions, and of course, to take risks. They're all very important. Having a strong work ethic is important. Um, creativity is reasonably important. Charisma. And we're going to get to, in a minute, how, how all these play out in terms of what we measured in the DNA research. Patience is actually very low. Um, and so I'm sure most of you, uh, as CEOs and founders of your businesses, that your staff will tell you they've got the, you've got the patience of a gnat. And that is going to be uh, one of your leadership challenges because at the end of the day, you've got to build a balance between getting results and relationships if you're going to be successful in building a business, being a leader. So what is the number one trait that we measured? Um, and so what, what I've done is, is using the DNA behaviour discovery system uh, and our product called Business DNA, 
We've had millions of people all around the world go to complete it. But what I did is I, I took a sample of 500 successful entrepreneurs who I know have got a business over a million dollars turnover. So some of them are EO members, some are outside EO that I've dragged in from the community. And I analysed what they do in their business, the revenues, uh, whether they were the founder or not. Isolated it down that if you are the founder and got more than a million dollars, so you were the real startup of the uh, starter of the business, the number one gene for success as an entrepreneur is resilience. So what are we getting at here? Is having the in in a way the uh, uh, the toughness and the courage to keep going when things are tough. You know, as we all know, uh, building a business is a journey. And some days you just get slammed with stuff and life events happen, financial events happen, things happen at home that can knock you off your stool and they can, and they can severely impact your business. And the, the successful ones are the ones who get back up and, and keep going. You know, Bob, Bob Tassone here and I were talking about this morning some successful entrepreneurs. Uh, uh, yep. No. Okay, but, but probably the, the gritty person is going to be this person. So, so from our fast-paced factor, the gritty person, if you're talking about grit, yes, is, is going to be this person. Okay? And these people are the ones who are going to be able to manifest their own reality. But the point I was about, about to make, but thank you for the question, is that there are people who have made money, They've lost it because of an event, GFC or whatever it is, and then they've come back and made more. And, you know, these are the resilient people. What's the second one? Risk-taking. And, uh, you know, I love this slide because, uh, you know, in a way we're all the mouse, right? And we've got to decide every day, do we pony up and ante up, you know, ante up and go further with our businesses? What decisions do we make to climb the mountain? And I always look at I'm the sort of at level four base camp on Everest and do I, do I go to the top of the mountain today or do I make a decision to, uh, to stay there and sleep another night or do I retreat backwards a bit till the weather's right? You know, it's a little bit like this mouse there. He's all prepared, ready to go, and is he going to jump for the cheese? But that's what we're doing every day. The third one is creativity. Now, a lot of other research studies would put creativity as the number one for, 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 for entrepreneurship. But, but, but in, in what we've measured across this sample, Creativity is the third one, and it's particularly for the startup, because uh, you've got to have an idea, you've got to be able to, uh, to see a different business model and, and a pathway forward, right? And the creative people are able to do that. They're able to reinvent their businesses more easily as well. The next one, the fourth one, is, is here, is, is about work ethic and focus and the pioneering factor. Now, one thing that's really important for, for sales uh, and building a business over the longer term is being able to set the goal and have the competitive drive to pursue it, come hell or high water. So whenever I'm looking at a person for sales or got the selling acumen, I'm looking for someone who's really strong in here. And this is really important for, for, for an entrepreneur. Now, interestingly enough, for the business that becomes part, goes past $10 million in revenue, this one becomes more important than the creativity. So, so those businesses that have got bigger, the CEO and the founder has had a stronger pioneering drive than the creative uh, drive. Then the last one here is charisma. And, uh, you know, there are people out there in the world who have this what I call external charisma. You meet them and you're just attracted to them. You want to be with them all the time and you will follow their ideas because they know how to naturally communicate. They've got a vision and you just, and you, and you just follow with it. And that's very important. If you're, if you're, you know, in a way, we're all building uh, 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 in our own worlds a revolution and we've got to be out the front. And so having some level of uh, charisma, particularly external charisma, is important. For the introvert, this one's a bit harder and this is why it's the fifth one because the, the introvert doesn't necessarily have that engaging manner out the gate. They're going to get there by being a little bit more commanding and uh, when they're ready to drive forward, they will step out. But this is a harder one for the introvert. But introverts can do it. Bill Gates is a good example, Mahatma Gandhi and, and other you know, uh, leaders out there uh, because people are prepared to follow the idea that they've got and they stick with it. 
And so it's more about the movement comes from, from a little bit more from within. So there is an internal charisma as well. So, so but that's sort of putting it, this all in perspective. This headset is just a little bit tight on me. Now, for some of you, it might be hard to read these graphs, and that's a little bit deliberate. But what I wanted to show you is this is all measurable for all of you. And uh, for those of you who have already completed the business DNA assessment, you can go back into our website and get this report on you, which will... Uh, prioritize your uh, um, entrepreneurial strengths in these five areas. And for those of you who have not done it, I'll give you the link afterwards. You can go in and do it. But here's a, here's a case study of a guy called Jack Sun, who uh, is a, uh, in, the, in, in the food and beverage business. He has a lot of uh, retail outlets, and he's built sort of an equivalent business of P.F. Chang's. I was in a forum with him once upon a time. Of course, this is not his uh, name. Um, extremely driven, very resilient, but not creative. But he never, was never the designer of the products. So that was sort of the one area that for him was a little bit harder, but big risk taker, very resilient. And he, this would be typical probably of quite a lot of the people in this room today. Um, certainly what my, my style looks like. Uh, Steve's, I know, looks like this as well. It's a little bit more the introverted leader here. But I want to give you the opposite. This man here... Craig Moon is more what I call a relationship builder. And he built um, an extremely successful business that's the equivalent of Intuit. Uh, it's, it's a stock market listed company. And, and you know, he was my client in Australia um, a number of years ago. And, and, he, and he is not a billionaire, but he's close to it. And it's all come from being creative. But he is an introvert again and very much a relational person, but he's worked off the introversion and managed himself from, from, uh, from, from that uh, strength. He found it harder to operate the business, though, a little bit, so he had a very strong team because he didn't like the conflict of making the difficult decisions. Uh, that's because of his more relational style. Um, so what do we do with all this information? So we sort of outline you've got these traits... And you're going to some, each of us are going to be strong in some and a little bit uh, have struggle areas in the others or not as uh, dominant in, in, in the other ones. But we've got to do something with it to be successful. And all of you in this room, as EO members, uh, are, are successful. At the end of the day, it's about managing your, your uh, res, uh, relationship uh, skills and your results uh, talents here. So... so at the end of the day, if you're going to be successful as, as a business leader, you've got to be able to manage relationships and build those and at the same time be able to build uh, or get results. And that's a really hard tension. Now, a lot of us in this room and entrepreneurs will be stronger at the results part of it and we struggle on the relationship building part. But this is where we've got to grow. If you're an introvert, the relationship building part could be harder because you don't find it naturally as easy to engage people. And, you know, what, one of the things I talk to Steve about is that you've got to learn to live outside yourself. That's why I did EO Leadership, because I'm an extreme introvert. Steve and I are the two most introverted people in this room. But we are up the front leading all of you because we've learned we've got to li live outside of ourselves and this is part of being successful and we grow that way and we can then take that into our own businesses. I would also say who you hire to work with you is really important. Some of you might have done Debbie Gordon's Master Key Program or be aware of that, about getting the number two into the business. That is also important to manage the results and the relationships and have the right yin and the yang inside your business. And you can see the, the person with the, um, the, the full line here, that's, that's a profile that's not mine but it's pretty similar to mine, that's the entrepreneur. And then the, uh, the master key is going to be someone who's much more moderate in their style. But they're never going to be the entrepreneur, but they're going to be a great counterbalance to you. So if you're going to, if you're going to grow your business, you've got to have to have a really good number two and get that yin and the yang right. And so uh, that, that, that's sort of one part. So who you hire to work with you at your C-suite level in your business and then down through your business is really important. And then about building the team. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of, at the end of the day, I won't go through every component of, of this graph uh, just for, for, for time's sake, but, but the big point here is that you've got to have different talents on the team. And then you've got to get them to understand each other, accept each other, and then respect each other. And a lot of the time, teams fall apart because the respect goes. And once your respect as a CEO goes for anyone in your business, they're on, a, they're, on a, they're on a runway of six months inside your business unless it gets uncovered as to what's, what's going on and gets dealt with. And a lot of the time, 
it's actually just not understanding the differences. It's not understanding that you've got someone who's really creative or they're very detailed. You know, we all feel like we're getting hamstrung by our CFO at times because, you know, they're just clamping down on the numbers and, and whatnot. But it's, it's them. That's what they're there to do. And so once you understand all that, then you, can, then you can build a cohesive team. It's a lot of work to do that. But, the, you know, the real big point here is, is for each of you to understand who you are, be much more, you know, behaviourally aware, and then, you, and then you can march forward. And this is sort of really the inside-out journey. And that's why I would encourage all of you to, to go to our link at businessdna.com forward slash EO. And this is complimentary, not charging anybody, and complete your own assessment and see what your traits are. And what we are measuring is your natural hardwired behaviour because this is really about how you're going to behave under pressure. The natural instincts is what's important here. Um, so I just want to wrap up you know, on this, get you all to complete it, that um, you know, Susan's going to talk a lot about quiet power, managing introversion, um, extroverts. That wasn't my role today other than to say it's important to know which one you are and then manage it. And, and Susan can, can talk more about that, but there are other factors out there to know about yourself to, to, to be successful as an entrepreneur.